Okay, good morning traders and welcome to Trader Structure and the morning jump start. So we're going to recap the US action, uh, European action and previously for the ASX um, or Asian market session as well. So it was a bit of a brutal night overnight for share markets. Um, the US got absolutely belted and that started in the European session, sorry, the Asian, Asian market session uh, when markets just toppled over and fell apart. So they actually did bounce back a bit coming through Europe. Uh, and Europe wasn't actually too bad and then obviously fell apart again in the US. Everyone's watching uh, US markets at the moment. So it was obviously triggered by the argy-bargy between Russia and the Ukraine. That doesn't look like it's going away anytime soon. There's a few egos involved in that. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll go over the action at the moment and just see where it puts us. Okay, so we'll start off. This is the, we're looking at the 30 minute charts. We've got, um, this is the ASX previous close around uh, four o'clock, should say four o'clock, four o'clock. Um, Sydney time yesterday and you can see the market just tanked into that and then in Europe sort of went sideways a bit and I think it was around here we go just around the US open about this red candle started to take off to the downside and really accelerated to the downside so at the moment uh, the pressure's down and we've got a major double top up here at 73.30 we've got lower highs in place another lower high in place 72.60 so that's holding the action down it's just whether or not we get a random sort of a spike on the open which has happened before the US is down we gap up in the open so um, it could be that the market's viewing itself as a bargain again, a uh, bit of a bargain into these zones. Maybe it's going to go lower, 71.86. I think things are different at the moment. The way the US is, is, and we'll show you the US chart in a minute, the way that's looking, it's breaking down. So I don't, I would not expect anything silly on the open, as in, uh, you know, gapping up and rallying from the open after a strong gap up. I would expect more some nervousness. Um, it's got to do with the fundies. I mean, if they want to start buying it, they'll just buy it and, and everyone that's negative gets squeezed back out of the water. So we'll see, but I'm expecting that to potentially you might get a bit of a pop just to squeeze out some of these sellers and then get another lower high and that pushing us into 786 or straight down to that level. Okay, and see if that can sort of hold. Otherwise, we, you know, you look into lows, new lows. And don't forget, being a Friday, it's going to make it tough for people to hold over the weekend. Uh, let's get over to... We've got, um, this is the Hang Seng, we'll just quickly look at those. They're on the knees as well. It's got a major level at 24.535. You know, lower highs in place that broke through this uh, 24.668. Now, funny enough, the futures market, which is um, obviously the main market, that was closed at 6 a.m. Sydney time. And the next two hours until the US closed, it sank. Okay, that's the CFD price. And so it'd be interesting to see whether, you know, futures gap down and have tried to have a bit of a rally and get a lower high to work through this level or whether we gap down to the level and just blow it apart. Okay, blow it apart, maybe retest and go even lower. Okay, so we'll wait and see what the Asian markets, either way, it's not looking too crash hot. If you, you know, pan out a bit, double top up here, you know, you've got this inside level, little double top up here, failure here, lower highs getting confirmed. And that's all part of a major lower high. If you start to look at it in terms of that, the action leg down, take that apart, you're getting right through that 24,250. So that could be you know, something you get in long term sell radar. Uh, the yen. Sorry, Japanese um, Nikkei falling apart as well off that 27, <coughs> excuse me, 460 area, uh, blasted through a few key levels, and we're coming into, you know, being in the open, coming into 26,855 extension level, so we can easily extend it. You can see where it was support before extended, then went straight back up. So we call that an extension level. It could easily get down to 26,730, could just blast through the whole lot and start to look down at 26,330, which you know, it looks like on a chart it's far away, but in points terms, Nikkei can do that easily. It could be down six, 700 points um, pretty easily. Same with the Hang Seng. All right, so that's another one that's looking, you know, on a longer term basis, it's looking quite bearish. And you've got this major sort of rolling over pattern. You've got sell off. You know, we had a bit of a bounce, a bit of another corrective move up. So one, two, starting to fail, fail off a lower high. So I'll be looking for that longer term to be on the um, sell radar as well. Dow, now we were speaking about this um, so Discord channel chatting to people about this, looking for a bigger rollover coming into that open US open. And you know that was sort of popping up on the open and then slammed down again. Okay, I think that was the open around there. It's 12.30, yep, that was it. So slammed down on the open, mid-session, tried to bounce, tried to make a bit of a recovery and got held down at 34.580. Didn't, ex I, look, I was marking, earmarking that to be a bit of a level, 34.350. Now I didn't expect it to get all the way down there in, in the one session, but you know, fears driving the market at the moment. And like we said before, this is key levels. We're starting to break down here. We're looking, this opens up a bigger move down to, um, uh, what's that, 33, 450, say. Okay, so if you've got these little levels in between where it could find a bit of some buying pressure, but at the moment, you know, just remember looking at the, I'll just get rid of all these, sorry. 
look at the bigger term picture. Let's go to a daily. That's your daily. You got major support through here. Okay, we're breaking down one first leg. If this second leg, uh, we'll just take this. If this is the leg down, that could easily get you know below this zone. It could easily just break straight through. So we could not zone, but we could have a decent sell-off. Now that's you know leg down recovery. Tried to go again. Uh, we were talking about that failing uh, many times before. Thirty-five, six ninety. Now that has failed straight through this. You know we'd say on the daily this anchor level. The fact that that was broken and this held thirty-five oh six five you'd expect it to extend its way down. So just keeping an eye out on the bigger time frames. Okay, we're not, it doesn't look like we're going to bounce at all at the moment. There's enough fear, interest rates, Ukraine, driving markets lower, giving something you know, for people to be concerned about. So I wouldn't expect any you know, major bullish just to turn in the tides out of nowhere. Okay, so the um, US tech, same sort of thing that's rolling over, you know, longer term trends down, lower highs, lower highs. This is what we're looking at last night. Um, it could have gone, this is what we're marking up coming to the US session. You've got higher lows up here, lower highs. It could have gone either way, really. But the fear that's driving the market at the moment, especially with the NASDAQ, people unwinding bigger longer term tech positions. Uh, remember, they've been going up so strong for so long. And that's been the key driver of the overall, the, the broader market on the S&P 500. There's a handful of you know, FANGS stocks. If they start an edge out of those, that FANGS is going to you know, head south. NASDAQ's going to head south. The S&P is going to head south. And that's creating that... Um, Pretty much fear into the market, let alone what's happening you know, with Ukraine and Russia. Look like they're going head to head at the moment. I think Russia's just picking a fight. The US don't mind the fight. Everyone's diving in. Okay, so that to me you know, is enough around with these key markets at the highs, which we've been speaking about many, many times. It's just an unwinding, you know, big unwinding of positions. If something sparks the fear into people, they don't want to see the positions they've held for a while uh, go negative or go into the red. People are going to unwind it. Whether they believe you know, the story of Russia and Ukraine, whether that's going to happen, it's, it's irrelevant. Okay, It's a trigger. So we'll um, see if that continues to drive down. I think you go to level down here. Potential support a little bit lower where, where we are, 14.130, say, just driving in there, bouncing off there before we get a bit of a squeeze of this you know, this leg down. Leg down hasn't, hasn't been squeezed at all. Big move down if you measure that in points terms from that high to that low, 422 points. So it's 422 point drop. With no squeeze, it could easily have a bit of back and fill, meaning back and fill. You know, we pop up sort of like this, squeeze some out, and then a bigger move down. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm looking at. We wouldn't be selling into this down here. I mean, where do you put your risk? You want to be seeing some sort of flush out and then, you know, confirmation that there's still some more fear that's going to drive that market lower. Go into Europe, DAX, <coughs> excuse me, driving lower, like everything else. Uh, lower highs, major structure here. Got major support at 14.878. Looks like we, we want to head into that at the moment. Um, you've got some minor support at 15.025, whether that's going to hold. You can see the way it's um, pushed down, bounced, pushed through that level, 15.260, bounced off it, extended down. So market's getting a bit extended. It's just where they're going to pull up. Okay, at the moment, the moves down. I think we're going to play catch up in the um, Euro European markets tonight when they open. because A lot of damage was done late. Uh, this actually does go into the close anyway, but you probably think this is going to be you know, fear driven. Once the indices open and they start to gap down, they could really start to drive harder uh, Europe tonight, then this could easily get dragged down to 15.025. Not a problem at all, could even blast through that and get down to this level, 14.878. Uh, I'm just have to wait and see what happens tonight. Then we've got UK, uh, that's you, uh, the FTSE. It's down at a level now, you know, down at a level it's touched on, started about here, touched into it once, twice, you had quite a bit of support come through here. Now, everyone's been buying it off there. You know, it's that, you know what that means? There's a load, a bucket load of um, stops below there. Everyone's going to be looking at that and going to break out traders, stops, anyone that's bought in here and held, bought it in here held for the longer term picture. If the hold stops under there, there's going to be a major trigger lower, okay? That's going to be a good target for the algos to drive the market down. It's just... Uh, a couple of things just to adjust that there okay so yeah if that's the case you look at this major structure here big sell off from there big bounce it pushed through okay it was all looking good up until that failure once it starts to fail it doesn't get through that high especially after this big move down big flush down it doesn't get it through it very hard and it retested again in here it's not looking so crash hot okay so like I said, it is a level, it's extended into there a bit. You know, it's had a big move down from sort of a rangey move from 76.32 down to this 
could be range bound, could bounce off there like we got here, might put up a fight or they might just give way. If we see any sort of action where it just blasts through and we get a bit of a that kind of you know move back into it, then I'm looking for a bang straight back down again. Okay, that's not conducive to a big bounce. You should see it whip straight back into that above that zone. If it starts to grind its way back up into that zone, there's sellers holding it down. Over to gold. Actually, we won't do gold just yet. Look at the currencies first. Uh, Aussie, it's got this you know, level at 72.15. It did react down and then went straight back up again. Is there is buying into the US, uh, sorry the US dollar as a safe haven, but it's not it's not you know big buying at the moment. It's not a big you know ramp high, which is meaning the Aussie dollar is um, sort of grinding down. It had that big spike, like I said, that was about that session in the European se sorry Asian market session where the market sold off pretty much it was across the board. Copper took a hit, oil oil ramped up, all indices across the board. Asians um, Hang Seng, Nikkei, everything took a big hit. So it was all because of that news of um, Ukraine and Russia. And now we bounce back up on the Aussie dollar, back to 72.15. It's held for a second time. So it could be that's what the shorts are going to be working off. You've got this little inside level. We're just going to get through 71.80. It could start to drive down. All right. Um, keep an eye on that one there. But uh, it doesn't look too like it's under pressure. Say some of the indices, indices are under pressure. Um, and it may take the rate, it may take. You know, with the indices, they took a bit of a hit. It may take the heat out of um, rate rises you know, with the Fed, but they're still going to look at inflation, unemployment, sorry, employment levels and all that sort of stuff, and they haven't changed. Inflation's still there. All right. Um, pound. Pound has worked its way up into that level, 136.18. It's it's holding at the moment, a bit of back and fill there, but that's looking more bullish than anything else. If that's going to hold, you are going to jam up to 136.56. Fair play. Okay, that's, that's what... Um, could be on the cards, but at the moment that that move up from these lows, thirty four ninety five and thirty five twenty two is extended. That sort of extended up there. It's a level where we could flush. This could be the flush. We may want to go further, extend higher into that level. It's a bigger level up here, which looks like it could be a bit of a target. So um, we'll be watching that one there. Euro now with the US dollar not doing a lot. Euro actually held up. So that was the spanking it got during the Asian market session, and it held up okay. Uh, with the US dollar sort of chopping around. And it could be that there's, because of the yen, yen is a safe haven, US dollar's finding a bit of selling and some buying. So it's a bit of a mixed appeal from it, uh, from the US dollar, which is, you can see, is reflected in that action into the um, euro. With it, it really choppy. It's really, really choppy. So whether this zone's through here is going to hold, you might find that holds in there. It's, yeah, that was a level, blasted up, flushed it, held it. We claim that we could start to hold these inside levels uh, and start to ramp up, or we could just start to head south. So at the moment, it's got lower highs holding, higher lows holding. Yeah, you know, for the moment, it's it's an each way bet. US yen probably the one you're going to keep an eye on. Uh, where there's going to be more safe haven buying into the yen to drive that that market lower. Like I said, the safe haven buying is outweighing into the yen, outweighing the US dollar buying at the moment. And US dollar is probably yeah, it's getting a bit capped, but we're still. It could easily pop up, you know, US dollar could pop up and drive this market high. You squeeze out some of these sellers, but for now that trend is down. I'm not expecting this to really hold. I would expect it to at least flush that level, maybe extend into these zones, maybe into this zone in here. Um, but for now, you want to see if this little minor level in here, 115.07, can hold that pressure's down. If it starts to get, you know, challenged or tested, even, you know, you sort of see the market start to you're know, doing one or two things it's going to head down retest and go or we're going to sort of back and fill off this level okay and start to squeeze out some of the sellers gold everyone's liking gold at the moment it's finally kicking off it's got nothing to do with inflation it's got to do with a uh, safe haven bid all right so that safe haven bid's taken it off that level at 1848 through 1860 charged through 1873 hasn't really looked back it looks like we've got uh, 1910 on the cards at the moment now that's it's getting a bit, obviously, it's a bit extended. We're coming to the Asian market session. The bulk of the heavy lifting is done through Europe and US trade. Not so much in Asian markets. Now, that did take off. Um, that was at 7 o'clock. So, at the start of the US session. Yes, uh, Sorry, European session yesterday. Now, the Asian market, you'll see that pop was about here. So, that pop was minor compared to what happened later on. Okay, and it's not like the news was known. So, you can see that it's done later on with the, the bigger markets, so European and um, US session really took off. But expect that, I'd expect that to continue on up. There's no real reason for sellers to be diving out just yet. Sorry, sellers to be jumping in or buyers to dive out. A bit extended, we might get a bit of back and feel like this and then ramp up, but we'll wait. 
wait and see how that plays out. Now copper, copper took a big hit. And is it 230? That was a big hit. It took, it's bounced back okay. Okay, it's been holding again off this uh, 98, 96 area. Whether it's going to hold off that area and start to ramp up, um, we don't know. I think if the US dollar starts to head south, yes, it could ramp up. If US dollar is a bit mixed, you're probably going to expect to see more of this chop. Been held down at 99.78 or 99.80, this little zone through here, and held up at this zone here at 9900. Okay, so if that's, um, if this is going to continue to hold, we'll just start to squeeze out some of these sellers and vice versa. This zone is going to hold when you continue to squeeze down off these lower highs and pressure down. Uh, oil, oil's bouncing around like a yo-yo. Uh, that was that was a previous market sell-off. It's getting a bit of, yeah, it's finding a bid because of the news, um, but I think there was other news that triggered that. I can't remember quite what, but um, it's probably, it's getting support. It was not some Iran, Iran news. It's weighing on the market. And um, the only thing that was sort of buoying it was the expectation that prices should go high because of Ukraine and, and what's happening over there. So if that's the case, then this level should hold 9070. You should start to see any sort of probe into that level held. And then we start to see um, if that starts to hold and you get these probes holding or any spikes into the level holding, sellers are going to give up. They have to buy back in the market. You get this little spike and you get the spike back in the 9325, even through to 95 again. If not, this level is going to hold 9325. Any sort of, just a reverse, any sort of spikes higher as buyers start to try to ramp it up, get sold into, uh, then buyers give up, it gets sold back down again. Okay, last couple we'll look at is just um, Ethereum and Bitcoin. They're both sold off along with the equity markets. So that's going to quell any any bullish any bullish tweets on Twitter. I don't know I always talk about it, but it's quite funny when they're all out, when the market starts to go up, they're all out and about um, tweeting up how good it is, how yeah, we're going to see it up to Bitcoin up to 100,000, 5,000 on Ethereum and, and whatever, high up. But when the market turns and you get margin positions start to get squeezed out, you got to remember, this is a product that's had, you know, both of them have been ramped up a lot. Okay, you get onto the Bitcoin, look at Bitcoin, look at that daily. Okay, it's been just ramped up from these levels down here. You see this in the market time and time again. <clears throat> Excuse me. You see it in the market time and time again in, you know, your speckies, all that. They get ramped up on hype. You know, this sort of thing, you get secondary sort of ramp. This is probably a bit stronger than what I thought. And then they can just fade. And they fade because people lose interest. People, you know, are getting squeezed out. They've been hurt too much. You know, they believe in the hype that it's going to go to 100,000. They get sold into here. They buy again. They get sold into. So they're just constantly getting sold into as smart money starts to leave. Okay. Not saying that's going to happen, but there is a chance that this starts to, you know, we could easily, no problem at all, we could see back down at 29,000, uh, 30,000. We could easily see a move all the way back down, you know, to these levels, which is not going to be the case. It's not going to be great for people, but that's doable and go and look at any chart on the specy, the miners, all that sort of stuff, you get ramped up and they fade and they can do nothing for about four or five years until they start producing the goods. At the moment, I don't think Bitcoin is doing too much. It's just a more hype than anything else to me. It's gone pretty long, but there could be, that this is the, you know, if the US starts to sell off, you get used equity markets start to sell off and we're starting to follow them. It, you could see it down at 30,000 quite easily. You could see that break. All right, so that's, Pretty much all I want to say. That's um, it. Good luck today, guys. Remember, stay safe. Don't go diving into long positions until they actually show some sort of confirmation, uh, and they're working off levels, especially on the indices. If not, I think it could be a short market coming to the weekend. All right, we'll speak to you again. Have a good weekend. We'll speak to you on Monday. Bye.